to a VO's journey. This show is all about helping you, the new and upcoming voiceover artist, grow your business and sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to step on. It is awesome to be back. I apologize about yesterday. I had a crazy day. My kids were sick, and it was just... um, Ended up being kind of impossible to get on. I had to call in some repair guy from my bathroom was all messed up and all that stuff, yada, yada. So anyways, I was unable to do the live. And you know what? I missed it. It feels like an eternity since I've actually done my live show, even though it's only been a day. It feels like it's been forever. So I am really glad that I'm back on and uh, we're live here on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube and Facebook. So hello, everybody. It's great to see you. Uh, Let's see. The real Bobby G, I'm going to say, Loch Ness Media joined on Instagram. Woody and Greg, good to have you. Today, I've got a really exciting topic to talk about. I've been diving in, Walter, good to have you. Been diving in a lot recently in creating some courses that I'm going to be rolling out soon on voice acting because, you know, most of my career previous to being uh, a full time voiceover artist, what's up, boss, was um, being a teacher and a voice acting coach and a director. And, you know, so it's something that I absolutely love. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, strong acting gives you a leg up amongst every, you know all uh, every other voice actors because I really just made it up <laughs> but to me we all have a money voice meaning that there is some type of tone there's some type of place in our voice that we can use that we will get hired for the most if you've been doing this for any short period of time or long period of time or whatever period of time you've been doing voiceover, you might have started to see a trend with types of voice work or not necessarily voice work per se, but styles or tones in your voice that you use that you get hired for more and more. And because of that, you either A, start to gravitate towards pushing more of that work out in your demos or your samples, um, or you know it's there, but you haven't done a lot of work with it, or you haven't found it yet, (laughs) meaning you're getting kind of hired across the board. There's no necessarily consistency in what you're getting hired for. So with that being said, um, uh uh-oh, did you, Greg, are you there still? Do we have, hopefully the connection is still working on YouTube. Um, But anyways, so anyways, um, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on. Sorry, that, that, that message about losing connection messed me up. So what I want to do is talk about, again, what your money voice is really quick. So what I mean by that is this is your tone, your style, a reading style that you do that's unique to yourself that you get hired for the most. Okay, That's what I like to term as your money voice. All right. Now, why should you try to find it or why should you try to get your money voice, as I call it? Well, honestly, before I actually found my money voice, I did work and I got jobs, but everything was very sporadic. It it didn't have a lot of um, cohesive nature to the type of voice work I was doing. Now, listen, that doesn't mean that you can't be, you know, a jack of all trades doing work from, you know, like character work and audiobook work and commercial work. I'm a big, you know, I'm a big uh, believer in doing as much as you can if it's possible. But for me, there was no consistency in why someone was hiring me. A lot of the times I felt I was honestly just in the right place at the right time. It wasn't necessarily that I was actually winning auditions per se or I was doing such great work that people couldn't help but say your voice is so incredible it makes me want to scream, right? There was none of that. So uh, I backed that up especially by when I started to audition more on sites that had more auditions like Voice123 and different places like Voice Realm and et cetera, and I wasn't getting work. Right. And I wasn't getting work. But what I did was one of the smartest things I ever did to figure this out was on my Fiverr account, since I do a lot of work on Fiverr now, uh, I put a little um, 
a little question at the end of my requirements page when someone purchases from me. And since I do about 100 and 120 or so jobs every month, it was de- it was decent data. So anyways, what started happening was about 90%, 90 to 95% of the people working that were hiring me kept saying the same thing over and over again about a specific um, voice in my demo, about why they liked that voice. And they would actually use terms in that uh, description as well. So it was very helpful to me on that sense to actually believe that, okay, well, this is something that a lot of people really like and they keep hiring for me, you know, keep hiring me to do this. And also, they were hiring me for my specific voice and from that read. They weren't hiring me to be someone else. They weren't hiring me and asking me to sound like someone else. Do you know what I mean? They hired me and they're hiring me to sound like myself in my specific voice. And it was that same thing over and over again that really got me thinking. Now, here's the funny thing. As I've noticed that, and that was I was getting hired for that on Fiverr, I started to notice that my other auditions from other sites that I would audition for, like Voice123, like Voice Realm, etc., I wasn't using that voice that I ha- I had put in my demo, the style and the tone and the pitch and the conversational style that I was using. I wasn't using that in my auditions. I was using a different type of voice. And what I found was, was that I wasn't getting any jobs. The crazy thing is, and and I, I, and it's silly, right? It's absolutely silly to not realize something. But when the light in my head went off and said, what are you doing? You are getting hired over here for this voice, but over here, you're not using it for your auditions. Duh, start to use it. So I did, and lo and behold, I started getting really high paying work from auditions I've been winning. And and today another job came in from a P2P site that pays really well from an audition I did. And what I'm finding is I'm doing less and less auditions because I'm more busy, that I don't have the time, and I'm getting more work from those auditions. Because I feel like I finally understand my money voice and where to use it all over now. Does that mean I can't do other things? Absolutely not. I can still do the character work. I can still do all the other stuff. But there's a specific type of of voice that works well for me that I can do really well that people like, really like to pay me for, for video narration. All right? So that's kind of like why you should look for it because what you're going to see is you're going to see, because most of you at this point, you are, you're hit, I mean, you are beating the drums. I mean, you are trying you're getting in front of people. You're doing everything you possibly can. And you're not, you're not slacking off. You're trying hard. You're getting in front of people. But if you're still not winning the jobs, if you're still not getting them, we've got to take a step back and say, okay, well, maybe it's not just the fact that I need to get in front of more people. Maybe I need to work on my acting. And finding your money voice is the key, at least in my mind. Um, all right, so let's look at where to look. Where are you actually going to find this voice of yours, this money voice? So for me, there are some things, there are some places that I like to go, but I'm going to list a site. And I love this site. And I want to say full disclosure, because I love this site, Voquent. Absolutely wonderful site, Voquent.com. Uh, it's a free site. I know Miles, the CEO, amazing customer service. Those guys are great over there. People are getting work. I myself, in full disclosure, have never got a job on Voquent. It's not necessarily, it's not an audition site. You go put up your samples. I've done a couple of tutorials. Absolutely, I mean, I love the site. They're coming out with new things every day, but they're not really a US, they're not really a US based business there in the UK. Anyways, with all that being said about that, what I love about the site is that they have done extensive work on what people are searching for when it comes to tone, style, characteristics in the voice. And they they have collected that data and they have created a site that's based on people going to there and trying to type in, I want a authoritative read 
that is courageous and confident. That's the tones that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a male uh, ages 35 to 40 uh, that has a U.S. accent or a British accent. Like they, they, they've, they've collected this data so that their people don't go there searching around, even though people still do. But the point, is, the point is, is that they have a big database of all sorts of tones and and styles, etc. And what's really cool about that is that we as voice actors can go there and use those tones to our advantage, meaning that we can start to um, um, practice those different ones. Now, Vokwin Quint came out with an incredible article. I suggest you go to the site, find it in their blog, but it was about the top six, uh, six searched tones that they have found on their site. And I've I've taken these down. I've written them down so I can talk to you about them. And I, I I and and if and as I read them to you, you'll find that this is really. Uh, I mean, we can we can we can definitely see these are the ones that are definitely done everywhere. So the first one is authoritative. These are these are tones, right? The second one is conversational. The second one is eloquent, or the third one is eloquent. The fourth one is enticing. The fifth one is inspiring, and the sixth one is nurturing. These six tones, right, play a huge part in what most people are searching for, most clients. For us as voice actors, we should be able to take these and start to use them to find that money voice, that voice that you can sell over and over and over again. Now I'm using voice kind of interchangeably because we all, you know, we're we're all speaking, we're all using our voice, but there's definitely different um, ways we can use our voice, you know, and and we all know this, but diving further into this, I mean, like, you know, there's different pitches and places that we can place words. There's different things we can make, you know, um, we can make things more authoritative. We can make them more conversational. We can make them more eloquent or enticing or inspiring. Or nurturing, right? They all of these things, like as I say them, you know, I was kind of doing a little change in the way I said the words and the speed and the tempo and all of these things. But finding what you do the best, what comes to you, either it's the most natural, and by the way, it's not always the most natural. I found that um, I got into habits. We get into habits, I think, when we speak. Uh, you know, in our lives, especially the older get, like we have habits of the way we talk to people or the way we think, you know, we're, and, and we don't, um, and as voice actors, we now do it, but we don't necessarily concentrate when we're talking to just people, you know, without thinking about it, about how we actually sound to them, right? I mean, how our voice makes other people feel and what it, what it sounds like to them in response to their belief of, what pitch our voice is and what it's portraying to them about our strength or, you know, our confidence, et cetera. So as a voice actor, we think about these things, right? Because, you know, we have on what sounds we can emulate, whether it's authoritative, like confident and experienced and powerful. This is all from this article, by the way, conversational. And then they've added like approachable, friendly, sincere. By the way, there's, there's so many of these. And I know I had a, a student last night who sent me a color wheel um, that's like a, a motion wheel, and it's got all these different emotions on it. But anyways, the point here is this is how you start to find your money voice. By taking each one of these tones, getting some copy, and starting to read and record them, starting to play around with them. All right, starting to try different things with pitches using them, all right, speeds and tempos, finding something that makes you say, ah, oh, yeah, that was good, <laughs> right? I've always, I've always said, I always told my actors this, if you like it, people will probably like it. If you think it sucks or you don't like it, I guarantee you other people are probably not going to like it. I mean, it's, I mean, it's pretty much straight across the board. Like, if you feel awkward about it, other people are going to feel awkward about it. If you feel like you nailed it, 
Now, I know that being said, there's other people where you feel like you nailed it and they didn't agree. But a lot of times it's not that they don't agree. They might have just wanted a different interpretation. But the money voice, though, the nailing your voice is a feeling that you get. I call it, um, and this was, I was going to talk about this in a little bit, but I call it um, in the pocket. These are just terms I've come up, you know, with and uh, that I use with my actors is in the pocket. So like finding that voice, I mean, like settling in your pocket, like you, it's a feeling you get, you know, like it's the right thing. I have this voice that I do or this style, this tempo that I use that I get hired the majority of the time, like I was talking about in the beginning, that's like a pocket and I fall into that pocket and being in that pocket gives me, I don't know, it doesn't give me goosebumps, you know, but it, it, it gives me a feeling like this is it. You know what I mean? This is it. No, it's funny. I was getting a phone call in the middle of the live. <laughs> Sorry, Instagram. I got a phone call in the middle of the live. Um, but anyways, because I have to use my phone for Instagram uh, as opposed to everywhere else. But this pocket, it's like, um, I don't know, it's like butter, you know, you, you, it's like you feel it. And if you have a style or a tone that you get into and it makes you feel that way, it's a good feeling. Like, you know, you nailed it. And then you get and by the way, the feedback you get, too, is important. You know, what feedback are you getting? Are you saying, you know, is people saying, you know, this is the most incredible voice ever. This is fantastic. Are you getting hired for the same thing over and over again? By the way, and I, I'm just throwing it out there, this is not always the case. But if you are struggling, getting work, and you feel like you are getting yourself in front of people, you are doing the things that other people are doing, your acting is the cake. Your marketing your business strategy, your equipment, all this other stuff, your brand, that's the icing. Your acting, that's the cake. You have to be able to be an incredible voice actor to get incredible work. You have to be, okay? It's so important. So with that being said, feeling that pocket, dropping down in that for your money voice will set you free. And using things like that article I talked about on Voquent, those six different tones, practicing those tones with copy, understanding where you fit in, like with the style of your voice. Do you do a really great conversational voice? Do you do a really great authoritative voice? Do you do really great political ads? Do you do really great enticing pieces? Are you an inspiring speaker? Are you a nurturing, a nurturing speaker, right? Are you eloquent, all right? Are, are, you, you know, are you confident or refined or precise? All these things you need to know and you need to be able to express that through your voice. And like I said, that's what I like to call my money voice. So now, when to use it. Like I told you before, when I started actually realizing after collecting all this data and the more work I was doing, and by the way, this is something interesting too. When people hire me and I don't use that tone, either I'm being lazy or I'm just thinking something else and I don't, people always come back and they say, no, 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 I want what you did here. This is what I want you to do. This is what we really love. I love what you did here in this one spot in these seconds. By the way, people wanted so much for me. They, they, they will literally take my demo, clip what it is, and send it to me like I need to hear what <laughs> I did. Like I'm always like, well, thank you for sending my demo back to me so I know what I sound like. But to them, it's so like that's what they want. All right? And that's what I do really well that the world wants me to do. And that's important. It's important also that it's what people want from us. In the end, just like anything else, we are nothing without an audience. We are performers. Okay. Now, the audience isn't always kind. And a lot of times they're wrong in their assessments. But they're not wrong about being confused. So where I'm going with this is, is that if you are struggling with feedback and having trouble understanding why people are either not necessarily hiring you or liking what you're doing, there is some confusion or disconnect between what people are wanting from you and what you're giving them. Whether they say something weird like, ah, oh, you suck, or you don't know what you're doing, or this is not what I wanted, how could you do this, which I've gotten a few of those, okay? 
you know, they there's a there's a disconnect between what they think they they want or getting and what you're giving them. And us as the business owners, our job is to be able to fix that connection. All right. And the best way to do that is to have these, like I said, these tones, that money voice of yours in your back pocket so that you can always use it. It's always there for you. All right. So the last point I wanted to make here was um, about my opinions and, and when you should be actually using it in auditions. Once you find it, you got to use it. Make samples. Do auditions. Do different types of auditions. Listen to other people's auditions. For example, have you ever listened to people's demos and you listen to them and they're like, man, they just seems like they, they got it, that voice down. And it's like, it just seems like that's the voice for them. That's because that's their money voice. They try to do something else. It's okay and it could be pretty good, but it's not as good as that money voice of theirs. So that's your, you know, that's our job too is to find that money voice. What are we getting hired for the most? And then once you figure it out, man, you ride that train all the way home. You just work that thing over and over again because that's the money voice. And that brings you more opportunities too because it gets you in the door as well. Because a good voice, a good voiceover, all right, and, and I, again, I'm using voice as a whole, but I'm meaning like a good read, a good, a good tone in your voice, a good style of a read that you do can get you in the door because people will like it no matter whether they want it or not, but it's that good. It takes work. It takes time for you to get it. Some people might seem like they have it right away. Some people, they have to refine it. For me, it took me a long time. It took me years to refine it. And even as an actor, on stage, I was still very physically, I was always very good. You know, I was always good at, you know, physically using my body, but my voice and everything, using what people wanted from me was difficult. So I was always good at character voices because in character voices, I could be crazy and wacky and I could rely on other people's, the work that other people had done, right? And character work and stuff and use that to then portray characters so people like them already but when finding my own voice that's solely on me and it's solely on you finding your own voice is solely on you which means it's a lot harder because we can't copy it and it takes time but you got to search for it and using all of the audience all the people that you know all of the work you're doing use it to your advantage to collect data so you can start finding what people want from you okay all right. Well, hopefully that helps <laughs> you understand what I mean by this crazy idea of your money voice and dropping into the pocket. Um, let's go ahead and uh, dive in. We've got some stuff going on here. Uh, if you have any questions on anything about what we talked about today, go ahead and pump them into the um, chat and I'll answer them. Let's see. We've got um, EP Ventura, Keto, Earl Hall. Good to have you. Earl, my man. Man with the plan, Earl Hall. Uh, Keto, love you. Your info brother, thank you. Now back to making money. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. All right, Woody, thank you for being here again. Greg, Walter, Boss, Woody, Joe, Izzy, Izzy, Jim, Greg, Big Jim, what's up, man? Rich, good to have you. Uh, John, good to have you. Cancun, Eric, y'all are in it today. I am the VO guy. Ooh, I like that name. I, I am the VO guy, excuse me. Switch Gaming, Cancun, Andy. Some, let me answer. Let's see if you guys got some questions. All right. Um, let's see. How to keep the – oh, hope the kiddos are feeling better. Thank you, Joe. Yes, the kids are feeling better. My son stayed home again today. He's doing a little bit better. My daughter actually went back to school, so that was good. And uh, I'm going to be living in my studio for the rest of the day and night because there's so much work I have to do because I didn't get it done yesterday or this morning because then I had to get the bathroom and all that stuff taken care of, like I said in my, my post yesterday. Um, good to happy Wednesday to you too, Rich. Good to see you guys. Voquent looks like they've got it together. They do. Voquent is a fantastic site. 
Miles will be the first one to tell you that there's not a lot of business in the U.S. right now, but they are doing a lot of stuff in, you know, in the U.K. and the rest of the world, and they are, they're coming. They're coming to the U.S., so it's a good place to get in. It's free, but more importantly, the resources they have, I think, are fantastic, like I was saying. They really do care about the voice actor. Miles really cares about helping voice actors grow and be better at what they're doing and get more work, and he's, you know, one of the first ones to tell you, you know, you should be on all sorts of sites. He's not stingy. I mean, it's a really, really great, really great team and, and good guy. Uh, let's see. Eric, this information is very on point for me. Awesome, man. Uh, thanks for so much of your videos. St I'm just starting, and they've been very helpful. Thanks, Switch. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Cancun, being in the zone, we're not reading anymore. You're being. Yeah, it feels really good. If you haven't felt that, by the way, if you – because I did this when I first started. When I first started, I was always uncomfortable. Like I wasn't doing it right. Like it, it felt weird and I was pushing and I was pushing and I was trying and everything was just pushed. If you feel that way, if you feel like every time you read something's wrong with your breathing, all right, I'm sure you guys can identify. We're voice actors. We know that. There's always something wrong with our breath. Thinking about my breath. Okay. That's like what you should not be thinking about because <laughs> the more you think about it, the more it's going to pop up. So all of these things, we want to get past that and we want to get you into the pocket using your money voice so that it's easier to read and you can focus on, you know, the beauty of what you're, you're saying as opposed to, you know, all that other junk that messes up our head. All right. Uh, let's see. Simone. Uh, hello, Anthony. Really enjoyed your Fiverr course and the Adobe Audition course. Thank you. They were really helpful and I appreciate everything you taught. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Greg, trying to set up an account with Voquin. They want three words that describe my natural voice. Laugh out loud. I have no idea. Well, you know what? I want to applaud you for being open and honest about it, Greg. And this is part of the work that we as business owners and as voice actors, also at voice actors and business owners, have to be able to describe. And we need to make sure that that description accurately reflects what we're doing. Does that make sense? Really? All right, uh, let's see. Woody, I like the feedback question on the requirements. I added that and also added they can leave that in the in the order. <laughs> there you go. Uh, boss Cyan, boss Cyan, Cyanide. I like the Cyanide. Uh, I've been handing landing a lot of character gigs, so I've been focusing there. Spend forty five minutes trying to perfect a character before I was happy. Nice, nice. That's a wonderful thing about what we do too. You know, we can record over and over and over again. I love that. Uh, Casey, hello, hello, hello. Producing an intro video. Can you use your brand name and, and logo, I assume, on your vid in Fiverr? Sure. Absolutely. I do. People find me because my, my name in Fiverr, my actual tag is ATPCRE because I, I started my account. I didn't know what I was doing when I started. I, I, I actually would have liked to use my name. You know, because I, I, I'm per, I, I charge the same everywhere. I don't do anything different in any other platform. But I, I don't, I can't change ATP CRE. So I use my name and my title. I use my name, Anthony Pika. They don't mind you using your name. Some sites do, like Voice Realm and et cetera. You can't put your actual name to, you can't say your name. You can say your first name, but you can't say your last name or how they can contact you. Fiverr, you can say, I, my, my, you got my picture and then my name right in my video. That's my video, my big name in red, big red, bold letters and my picture. So absolutely, you can use all of it. Uh, let's see. Got my first job there two days ago. Nice. Cancun Andy. Maybe I'm missing it, but Vokwit needs some more how to get started. Didn't realize the demo category categorization and that can't send in a demo reel yeah so if you look at my videos i did a couple of different videos on how to get start up and set up in there but you're absolutely right you can't do a demo because they want samples they want samples just like i was just telling you about those different tones and stuff they want samples uh let's see um hey anthony finally caught your stream oh that's all right ken it's good to have you man thank you when establishing yourself on social media, specifically Facebook, do you click the community public figure or the business brand to set yourself up? I do business brand. I do business brand. All right, because it's important too, because I use, you know, when Instagram, I also, you know, because Insta, uh, Facebook owns Instagram. So Instagram, you have a business account that has to go through Facebook. So I use the business brand. 
definitely for my page, my business page. Good questions. All right, and got any questions over here on Instagram? Not at the moment. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you sticking around today. If you get a chance, please go ahead and like this. Uh, if you're on Twitter, retweet it. Please follow me. Subscribe. If you're on YouTube, tick the notification bell. If you're on Facebook, hit the like button. Like button. Share it with somebody. All right. And you're on Instagram. Go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, check out my profile. Follow me. It would be wonderful too if you guys could also head over and listen to my podcast if you get a chance. And uh, we have a Facebook group too that if you're interested in joining, there'd be a link in the group below or in the and the, some of the different things that we're doing. Well, if you're on Facebook, you're already there. But in YouTube, I'll put a link as well. And um, other than that, thank you guys so much. It's Wednesday. December is rocking and rolling. I know there is somebody who asked me a question the other day about how I felt about the shift in December to January and what to expect for you know the change over in season and does it get slower etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think i'll talk about that as well but you know i think it also determines on what you're preparing for but right now in december man you should be you should be killing it and if you're not generating tons of business right now i don't think you found that money voice okay all right you guys best of luck talk to you tomorrow peace